first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace. All right, we're going to jump on in and we're going to deal with, I guess you're going to say, some of this info of this so-called white supremacy mentality. As we know, white supremacy is a belief. How false it may be is still a mentality, and it promotes that belief that white people or Albion's Europeans so-called white people or superior to other people of racial backgrounds. Let me know that before the Reconstruction era of the late 1800s going into the um, early 1900s, that white supremacy was dominant in the United States, especially before um, the American Civil War and even decades, as we know, as I said, just after the um, Reconstruction with the Jim Crow laws and so forth and so on. Um, in large areas in the United States, all right? And, and of course, this included a holding of non-whites, i.e., specifically African-Americans, Moors, etc., in chattel slavery. Now, the thing is this, is that chattel slavery has never ended. What is really going on is we've been put into paper or what's called chattel papers. These chattel papers show and prove that there still exists what we call modern day slavery, even though however you're not physically chained. Your mentality still has that of slavery and the marks of slavery on it based on this system and the way in which it has been structured in which it has a predominant mind state of those who are in power or appear to be in power. And, of course, this power is linked through um, economics, which we won't get into tonight also. And when we talk about economics... Um, we suggested, if you want to do a general overview, we suggested that you learn the process of the UCC. And for 
of those in which they have a problem with that, you got to understand contracts. The contract in which they have on you is of your straw man, which is your birth certificate. Your name's put in all caps. According to the IRC, which is the uh, Internal Revenue Code, the birth certificate is worth about $650,000. And, of course, I'm sure the interest is going up to be just round that off to almost a million dollars. All right? When they say that you're worth your weight in gold, let's give for um, instance that a child weighs 10 pounds. And um, each pound um, is, I guess you would say, um, As you can see, it's sixteen hundred dollars, and then sixteen hundred times ten comes up to one hundred and sixty thousand. And then, of course, if you take that to the bank, they would do fractionalized banking, in which that that would be marked up to one point six million dollars because the inflation rate would go that to ten times. Um, ten times the value. So we're talking about between six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to a little over one million dollars is what these birth certificates are worth. And we say that because remember, gold right now is about one thousand and over one thousand dollars an ounce. And when they say that you're worth your weight in gold, you would take that, of course. Um, you know. At one thousand, or you know, I think it ranged now between one thousand to sixteen hundred dollars now per ounce of gold. So you would take that in consideration in between that of if a child weighed ten pounds, you know, and that's how you average that out to um, to eventually to would be recall about one million to one point to one point six million dollars. So. We're talking about the birth certificate in which that has your straw man name attached to it. And your straw man is what we will call the artificial person or the artificial entity. According to Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, it specifically states that the artificial person is distinguished from a natural person. For an artificial person was created by the government. So the government created the artificial person, i.e., transmitting utility, the dummy, in order to do business in this society, especially after 1933, in which that we get the House Joint Resolution, or HR, um, HJR 192, in which that shows and proves that the goal was taken um, or stopped from being backed. I'm stopped back in the dollar, I should say. And because the gold is stopped back in the dollar, that means that we have nothing more than what's called for the um, reserve notes, or FRNs, or fiat notes. Basically, money in which that has no value whatsoever except for the amount of which that it's printed on or printed with. Um, I think it's about two cents now. So that means whether it's a $1, $5, $10, 20 50 or 100 or more. It only takes two, uh, two cents in order to print up the money. All right, so your straw man is a legal person subject to legislative statutes, codes, rules, regulations, ordinances, policies of these corporations. The straw man is a trust, trade name, or what is called a safety Q trust, a um, doing business as in the commercial world, as we would say. It came into existence with your birth certificates, um, which was bonded and given a trust value of, like I said, about $650,000 in credit, um, at least according to the Internal Revenue Code, Section 6331, where it speaks about levy may um, be made upon or accrued salary or wages of a bank or officer, an employee, or elected official of the United States, um, the District of Columbia, or any agent, or... Um, instrumentality of the United States of the District of Columbia. In other words, i.e. an employee. Someone who is employed or who 
was born in Washington, D.C. So um, I think um, when you look at the straw man, if you go to United States Code um, 15, Section 1127, the definition includes a commercial name, a trade name, um, juristic name, etc. But like I said, the straw man is merely an artificial commercial entity employee instrument by which that the parent corporations, um, the United States federal government, um, directs and extract all fees, fines, and taxes from. Um, they can't do that to a natural person, but they can um, to an artificial person. So we was saying last week that you need to do a negative avertment or a denial of corporate status, in which that shows the distinction between the artificial person status, which is your birth name, and your indigenous appellation, which is your natural being, or the name in which that you utilize as um, identifying yourself as being natural or indigenous, aboriginal to this land. The straw man being the transmit utility within the economic scheme venue or um, world, as we would say. And this fraud is based on the DTC, which is the Deposit, um, Depository Trust Company or corporation coming from out of um, New York, um, Manhattan or New York City, New York. I think the address is like 55 Water Street, um, New York City, New York, 10041. Um, is the address on which that you can actually look them up online and check out their um, subsidiary companies on which that um, do business on the stock market, i.e. Wall Street, as well as also on the foreign stock exchange. Um, in which that we're talking about really the moving around of your birth certificate because your birth certificate is a bond. That's what the red numbers on your birth certificate symbolize. Um, on your UCC1 financial statement, you would claim um, the state file number in which they have attached to that birth certificate. Okay? Now, once that is done, um, you will put that in a collateral listing. Um, some states still take that information. Some will mark it out or tell you to write that out. If they do, then you can put that actually on your collateral listing on your whole harmless indemnity clause or agreement, or is that attached to your private agreement, i.e. security agreement, okay? Because what you're doing is actually um, taking back this slave and master relationship. You're making yourself the master which is the indigenous natural person, and the slave is the debtor, which is your birth certificate name, which the government created in all caps in order to be able to do this fraud in which they have going on. However, if you check the back of your Social Security card, um, those numbers in red, I've seen it in green, I've seen it in black, I've even seen it in blue. But if you check the back, normally it's in red. Now, of course, you know your Social Security number on the front. That is your um, exemption um, number without the dashes. It is also your employer's number. Or at least that's what they use in order for you to get employment nowadays. All right. The back of the Social Security card, you've never been told what that meant, that letter in front of those numbers. Well, based on whatever number that you have is attached to one of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. All right. If it's A, then that's Boston. If it's B, that's New York. If it's C, that's Philadelphia. If it's D, that's Cleveland. If it's E, that's Richmond or Virginia um, and Charlotte um, out of North Carolina. If it's F, that's Atlanta, Georgia. If it's G, 
at Chicago, Illinois. If it's H, um, St. Louis, um, Illinois, Missouri. Um, if it's um, I, then that's Minnesota. I mean, excuse me, um, Minneapolis, Minnesota. If it's J, that's Kansas City. Um, if it's K, that's Dallas, Texas. And if it's L, then that's um, San Francisco, um, California. So these are the areas in which that um, they have um, attached you to, which is on the back of this Social Security card, these particular banks, Federal Reserve banks. Once you understand the birth certificate, the Social Security card, then you can begin to know the signs of how to eliminate your debts um, through discharge process with the bill of exchange um, and accept it for value, which that you can do for credit repair, mortgage termination, which must be in good standing, car note elimination, student loan discharges, even child support elimination, and even your bills. All right, learning signs of bill payment, in which that you can also do with a um, septic for value, as long as you have the presentment, in which that they send you every month, along with a 1099-A um, and a 1099-B. If it's based on cancellation of the debt, then that's a 1099-C. Learn about these forms. Learn the signs of optional Form 90, uh, release of lien on real property. Optional Form 91, release of personal property from escrow. Standard Form 28, affidavit of um, individual surety. Learn about all these forms. All right, when you do the UCC1 financial statement, make sure that you have your affidavit, copyright, trademark, trade name that you have filed also at the county recorder or what is called the register of deeds. Your UCC, um, affidavit UCC attachment. Your security agreement, private agreement, hold harmless and demonic clause with the collateral list and avoid your property and assets. A bond for discharge, or what is called affidavit of um, I have it even for commercial discharge, as it also is called, your negative avertment. Um, bill of exchange, non-negotiable charge back. Um, private bond set off, if you're going to send this information to Timothy Geithner, who's the United States Secretary of Treasury, to activate your UCC trust account so that you can begin to start doing this process on work, even though some claim that it's not necessary, but yet um, it comes back on them later because they never had their UCC trust account activated and open and never was given notice um, to the Secretary of um, Treasury, who now currently is Timothy Geithner. What this whole thing is about with economics is to be debt free. Or why you think they're building a concentration camp, or so what is called detention camps? because they are also known as, or a.k.a., debtor prisons. If I'm not mistaken, China owns the debt of the United States. And for those referring to themselves as U.S. citizens, what do you think this means? Because if and when China starts collecting the, its debt, who is going to have to pay and how? Listen to what I just said. China owes the debt of the United States. They even have a commercial that was on TV. Now it's banned. And which that a professor was teaching the classroom setting. And the teacher basically was saying that we own the United States. And everybody in class started chuckling and laughing. Because the United States, i.e. you, for those who consider themselves and still say that they are a U.S. citizen. And this comes into another thing about many of the Moors within the various temples in which that they say that they are U.S. citizens. 
Well, if you're a U.S. citizen, then I would think that it would behoove you to learn the science of the process of discharging even more so and learn the science of the UCC because you are stating specifically that you have a contract. And you don't mind the privileges in which they have stripped away from you or waived from you in regards to your rights. Also, when this Amero dollar comes online, you have to say that what the Amero dollar is something of substance because it will be backed by silver and gold copper. If you don't believe me, you can go to www.dc-coins.com. You can actually get in contact with a guy by the name of Daniel Carr who actually designed the Amero dollars for the United States government. I suggest purchasing copper or finding pennies before 1943, which was made totally from copper and other coins, nickels, um, even the dimes and the quarters. Um, if they are old enough, they was made out of silver. So you want to purchase silver and gold. Silver right now is about fifty dollars a troy ounce. Gold is a little over a thousand dollars. Learn the science of investments, penny stocks, Wall Street, which is the public stocks and bonds, examining the various stock exchanges. Learn how to do foreign stock exchange. See, when one becomes a secure party creditor, one becomes a private banker. That's the private side. That's what the back of the Social Security card symbolizes, is the private side. The public side is your numbers on the front of that Social Security card. And everything we do, there's a private and a public side. And you have to know how to distinguish between the two in order not to get caught up because if you take something that's private and bring it into the public side, then you have just done a disservice. And you could possibly go to jail. And this is what you have seen within a lot of these movements, such as the so-called sovereign movements. All right. Now, how do we know how accurate this information is? Well, let's go to the Constitution, Article 6, which states that the Constitution, its laws and the treaties are the supreme law of the land. What is its laws? Its laws are talking about the United States Supreme Court decisions made by the justices that sits on the United States Supreme Court. This is what has been said. If you get um, the Federal Reserve Bank booklet, Moderate Money Mechanics, on page three it states that um, in the United States, neither paper currency nor deposits have, um, have as commodity, um, commodities. A dollar bill is just a piece of paper. Deposits merely book entries. Okay, if you get um, if you go to um, United States Supreme Court case law Eckhart versus the Commissioners CCA four two FD two D one five eight, it states that um, giving a Federal Reserve note does not constitute payment. Fidelity Savings versus Grimes one three one P two D eight nine four states that the use of a Federal Reserve note is only a promise to pay.
All right. Um, matter of fact, the IRS Code Section One Point One Zero Zero One Dash One states that Federal Reserve notes are valueless. United States, um, Rain versus State Two Two Six S W One Eight Nine states that legal tender for the reserve notes are not good or lawful money of the United States. And why is that? Because according to the Constitution, it states that coinage is what? The legal tender in which that is made by Congress, i.e., the United States Treasury. find out that by um we will get into some of these questions in the chat room um in about um the next few minutes here. All right. Um, at nine o'clock, we're gonna to begin to talk about the second half of information, which that we talked about. Um, that we're gonna get into the last radio show, but we're gonna continue dealing with the education, the entertainment, the labor aspects. All right. Um, we got into. We got into the education in which that we got into the education in which that we was talking about the home schools in which that in um, most of the states you can normally homeschool up to at least four children. Um, that would be a start for the um, for those who would like to start doing the homeschool. Um, the curriculum in which that I suggest that you would use is Brother Marcus Klein. Uh, from front, he's the editor for Frontline Magazine from out of Chicago, Illinois. Um, I was a writer for Frontline Magazine for about four years, from 2002 to 2006. And he had the best curriculum that I've seen. All right. Now, if you're um, on a theocratic society, i.e., a temple, a more science temple of America, a more holy temple of science, or a church, um, each theocratic society is supposed to have their own school or schools. And this information can be definitely intro, um, introduced into that environment. Okay. Now, as a grand sheik of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World, um, my wife and I has been doing this for years. A tutoring, a tutoring program for the children. Um, within the neighborhood in which that we had up to about 15 children in the neighborhood. We go around and pick them up after school um, on certain days, and then on Saturdays we would sit down and analyze um, various movies for they can see um the nonsense which that's being perpetrated and then talk about the solutions on how to go above the programming. Okay. Um, some of the books in order to get would be The Miseducation of a Negro, 
Education of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. All right. Um, for the economics information, of course, the um, Black Power Blueprint, excuse me, um, Blueprint for Black Power by um, Dr. Amos Wilson. Also, um, get the videos and look up information by Dr. Claude Anderson on um, economics. Okay? So these are just some of the things that we can do. Remember, we're going over solutions and practical view of these particular areas in which that we are affected by this so-called white supremacy, this mentality, which actually is an inferiority complex, according to the ISIS papers by Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, who states specifically that the reason why whites feel the way they do is because of genetic inadequacies. In other words, because they lack melanin. And then as they can see, the people all around them in the world has darker hues of melanin. And i.e. us being the darkest people becomes the most contrast. And thus, um, as we can see even in their court system, um, enemy number one. Because when I go to court, 98% 98% of the people there, especially you for, crim- for um, traffic um, offenses, are people of my heel. They are melanated beings. Okay, but we're going to get into the law in a few seconds. Let me continue the labor. There can't be any labor without businesses. So we talk- talked about the structures of business how you have to go to the Secretary of State in order to do an LLC, which is a limited liability corporation. Within the states of Nevada and Delaware, um, I believe um, to form an LLC in those particular states, it is free currently. In the other states, I think that you have to pay, like um, here in North Carolina, you have to pay $200 annually in order to keep your LLC going. Um, You can do also an unincorporated nonprofit organization. And these are things that you can do to start your own business. Once again, things in which that you enjoy doing, that you are very that you're good at. If you're an artist, such as with the music or drawing or painting, then you can begin to start doing that. You can put together your own website we told you to go to www.freewebs.com and register with them. That's a free web online with a host, and you can actually um, design it yourself and get your information out um, to the masses. And you promote yourself through the social networks, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and the other ones on which that um, you might um, go through. Okay. Um, how to put a business together? Of course, you need a plan. You don't have to write out a long, exact, um, um, elaborate plan like five, ten years down the line. But you definitely want to have in mind of a um, of a short-term plan and a long-term plan. But at least get your short-term plan down, you know, of what you want to do um, immediate. All right, if you want to um, go outside of the Internet, you can go. Um, you have to find location. And as they say, location, location, location is the key. Of course, the location will have to be near a main service road where there's, or where there's heavy traffic, but there's a lot of movement. Always is the best so that you can advertise um, in an area like that and which that you can also build up a customer base. Okay? Um, look for uh, for businesses in which that have um, closed down, in which that possibly could be um, under foreclosure, buildings under foreclosure. 
You know, these are just things. I'm just putting things out there in order to get people to thinking. Um, also, being with labor, you also want to deal with the science of land. Um, land costs right now um, per acre um, between two to five thousand dollars. That's not a lot of money, and you can have a, um, a piece of your own property. At least in the south, you have to check in your um, in your location, of course in your various territories and states in order to find out how much the land is. But the land in North Carolina is normally ranged between two to five thousand dollars, so just a little bit just a little bit more than that. And that's for a complete acre. And you can definitely grow quite a bit of crops. And then of course by growing your crops you can begin to um, if you um, get a um, little U-Haul or either um, a truck, you can begin to actually start selling your own um, produce. Even though I know they have supposedly have passed laws um, concerning the fact that we can't um, sell produce food or or that we can't um, do organic and all of these types of laws, which that they supposedly have passed through Congress. Um, right now, they're not being enforced. So right now, you need to get your grind on. And do what you have to do, and um, get this information out to the people, and um, get some good produce and foods out to the people, because we need it. This damn um, genetically um, modified organism or the genetically altered food in these supermarkets um, isn't doing us any good. It's not making us obese people, as you can obviously see, because um, the people were not this obese if you look back in the 70s and the 80s. This started to occur within the 90s and now into the 2000s, especially with the change, or better yet, with the adding of soybean oil into on the majority of the ingredients on the um, on the um, market in the grocery stores. Soybeans, if you look up, if you investigate soybeans, soybeans has a large amount of estrogen, which is a female hormone. When a woman gets too much estrogen, she becomes obese. When the male get too much estrogen, his phallus and his testicles or testes, they begin to shrink. His voice become a um, higher octave. All these things occur. All right? So um, this is why a lot of the vegetarians and vegans began to um, shut down a lot of the soy products in which that they was intaking. And it was very wise to do so based on those particular studies. Matter of fact, soy products um, actually is now um, used to make plastic out of. Okay? So we definitely have to keep abreast of a lot of this information. Um, let's go to the law. Nationality is still the call of the day. Your status. Three-fifths of the human being is what the Constitution states that you are Article 1, Section 2. You must put an affidavit on public record, a notice stating that you are not three-fifths of a human being, and that according to the Dred Scott case decision of 1856-1857 was never changed or repealed. So therefore, it still stands that you are not a U.S. citizen and you can never be. So as long as these issues are in question, and if they claim that the 14th Amendment was, if the 14th Amendment was ratified, it wasn't. They brought it before 19 states. All right. 15 of those states denied it. Now, I don't have to be a mathematician, but they got more than 19 states nowadays. They're supposed to have 50 states plus various territories, Guam, Puerto Rico, uh, Virgin Islands, so forth and so on, right or wrong. So now we're talking about 50 states plus, and they never 
brought the issue back up before the rest of these states in which they joined the union. So that means that the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. So you are not a U.S. citizen. What they have done was give you privileges to think, to make you think that you are. And the privilege in which they've given you is the ability to go down to the courthouse and get married by them and pay them $50 for that process. Or get a driver's license where you already had the right to travel according to the various constitutions. Remember what we said last week, you have four constitutions. Articles of Association, Article, Articles of Confederation, Declaration of Independence, and the United States Constitution for America, or the Constitution for the United States of America, plus the Bill of Rights, which is only ten of them for us. So, in Articles of Confederation and the Declaration of Independence, it specifically says that you have the right for travel in regards to um, the Declaration of Independence Where it states that you have the right to life, liberty And the pursuit of happiness All of that is, in, is endowed Into your right of inalienable rights As the right to travel Uninhibited Without a passport, without a driver's license All of those things once again Is just like the senator um, um, The congressman I think he's a senator from From um, Georgia he said it's like a throwback to the days of when they was asking us for our papers. In other words, he felt us on that. Because if you go to the movie Roots, you would see after Toby ran away and before they got him and cut his foot off, the overseers was looking for Toby and they run up on a moor and his son who had their own horse and their own buggy and their own land. And... He asked him for his papers, and he pulls out his papers. And the overseer give him back or throws back his papers to him, and they continue on looking for Toby. Now, hold on, this is doing slavery. What is the difference between him and Toby? Well, obviously one can read because obviously they was writing on the paper, and obviously one can write. And obviously it has some type of public notice Um through the county for he can operate within that territory in which that he has land connected within that territory Toby didn't, couldn't read couldn't write had no land connections why because they say he was from Africa and we all are but some of us not from just 400 years ago some from a before 100,000 years ago, some 6,000 years ago with the Omex, 75,000 years ago with the Fosums, 2 million years ago with the Twa people. They've all been here in North America in the Western Hemisphere for hundreds and thousands and millions of years. Our relatives, our descendants, they're right here. So some of us has a further back genetic bloodline, and for us, who are filling the indigenous information, obviously we have those ties to um, that ancestry. So nationality, when we're dealing with the science of law, is the call of the day. Real law, as we said, is natural law. That is the highest law, which is universal law, dealing with the laws of Mayat, dealing with the laws of Tahuti. Mayat is the counterpart, a feminine counterpart to as well as the wife of Tahuti, as it is says within the um, Kemetic or Tamarian text. Well, remember, Mayat has seven cardinal laws. Truth, justice, righteousness, order, balance, harmony, reciprocity. Her husband has seven universal laws. Mentalism, polarity, correspondence, cause and effect, which is karma, Rhythm, vibration, sex. So, these 14 areas symbolize the 14 pieces of Osiris or Osar, as we would say. Okay? In which that must be brought back together again to make one whole. For we can actually have a real resurrection, not just within physical life, but also in the spiritual life. This is the real science of law, 
Everything we should be dealing with is based on natural law. This is why the Constitution states um, um, that when we get into unalienable rights or unalienable rights, that's exactly what that is. That's God's rights. That's natural rights. Rights in which that man cannot give unto you. Remember, we said the birth certificate, social security card, all these things um, are man-made or given by the government. However, God's laws gave you the ability you know, to do things as long as you do not violate someone else's rights. The government has forgotten that. The government has forgotten that it's been designed to be a service to the people and not the people to be a service or a commodity. All right. So um, when we speak about the spiritual information, this is what we're talking about. All right. Um, we're going to get more into the science of this. Uh, when we get into the politics, of course, that's correlated to the science of law. Um, policy or politics normally is colorable law, dealing with ordinances, statutes, codes, rules, regulations. All these things correlate to a legal system, which may or may not be lawful. Because a lot of these um, laws that they say all laws are nothing but legal, and they do not correlate or coincide to the Constitution. And the Constitution is based on natural law. As a matter of fact, the Constitution states that whatever it does not agree with it has no withstanding. In other words, those laws which appear to be laws on the surface are actually null and void. And you, as a natural person, do not have to abide by them because they have no effect whatsoever in your life. And this is what we have to get back to because right now you're being stripped of your liberties and of your rights. Matter of fact, when you go to court, they ask you, do you know that you are waiving your constitutional rights? And we stand there and say, mm-hmm, yeah. Well, come on over here and I'm signing this waiver form. Huh? you got to start contesting some of this. When they ask you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? They're telling you that you're being liable for the charges in which that you might or might not have done. And they have attached a bond to that particular case or that matter. And you're being held liable for the payment of that bond, whether you pay it out your pocket or either you pay it by you going to be in jail. When it comes to traffic matters, what you want to do is um, put in a counter suit to the suit in which they have given you. And you also want to put in a affidavit trust res in which that makes the judge, the trustee, and you the beneficiary. These are the things which that you have to learn the science of in order to um, be able to protect yourself in this type of society. In other words, you would get raped without the Vaseline, as we would say. So this is the science of politics. You must know the difference between real law, colorable law, de jure law, de facto law, which is legalities, legal. Legal looks and appears to be lawful, but it might not be. Look up in the Black's Law Dictionary, color, colorable colored law or color, colorable law, colored office or colorable office. Look up all of these definitions, and they will tell you that when it gets to the word color, that it appears to be something real, but it isn't. All right? We went over religion. Now, hold on. Let me go back to the politics, too. The only form of um, government that we're supposed to have, according to the Constitution, is a Republican form of government. This does not, this does not do not get this confused with the Republican Party. That's a party. 
We're not talking about a form of government. Okay? The word demon or democrat, as we said last week, comes from the word demos, Latin word demos, which means demons. Kratzi means the rule of. So democrats or democracy means the rule by demons. The word republic or republican means that the public has put representatives in place in order to represent them. But they are not doing that. Why? Because they are no more than Democrats or ruled by demons themselves. All right? In a real voting system, you would not have to fill out paperwork in which that you have to state based on their categorizing if you are black, white, or other. And that's what you have to do in their voting system. In their selective service. In their um and everything in which that you do is based on a class system. So we can sit here and just think and not think that there's white supremacy or there's a supremacist mentality when it is, when it is. And we'd be fooling ourselves to think that it isn't. And it has these tentacles throughout these various nine areas and more of our lives. All right? We went over religion. And these are the last things I'm going to say before we get into the second half. Went over religion. We said that all the world, major religions, come from out of Africa, from an African people, from the African mind. And I'm saying Africa, not based on Scipio Africanus. Scipio Africanus, that was his nickname because he defeated Hannibal. So they gave him the nickname Africanos. Scipio did not have that name. He was not born with the name Africanos. So for people or historians to state that falsely is something in which that we have to correct. They are not, and Africa has not been named after after a white man. After Sibio Africanus. The word Africa is made up of three words coming from ancient Kemet, from the Metuneter. The word Af or Afu means body, flesh, house, temple. Hence, when you read the various scriptures in the Bible where it says that the body is the temple of God, that's what it's talking about. The word Ra means light, sun, force, power, photonic energy. Prana, Chi, Ki, Holy Spirit, God. And Ka means spirit. Breath, breath of life. So it is saying that Africa means the house of the spiritual light or the house of the spiritual power or force. In other words, the house of spiritual enlightenment or of God. So there is nothing wrong with the word Africa. We have to stop that nonsense and that foolishness. We have to correct this. You can look it up even on, hell, even Wikipedia. Out of all the words that I would want to say, hell, even Wikipedia tells you that um, um, that Africanist, that was a nickname given to Scipio because he defeated Hannibal. And that was not originally part of his name. So a white man did not name us. Another misconception. All right? Now, um, when we get into this religion, we said about Christianity. Christianity is where the word Kharasani comes um Christianity comes from the word Kharasani. Kharas was the mummified body of Osiris or Osar, which means the soul. 
You can get this from Gerald Massey's books, um, The Book of Beginnings, um, The Genesis Revisited, as well as also um, the um, Gerald Massey Lectures, as well as the Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World, Volume 1 and 2. You can get those from his various books. So Kares means the mummified body of our soul, which is talking about when the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland and the soul is half asleep. Waiting, because that is the um, bridegroom, and he's waiting for the bride, which is the Kundalini, which is also half asleep at the base of the spine, to reconnect with him once again. This is the resurrection. And through that resurrection comes the birth of Heru, which is what is called the Immaculate Conception. This is where you get your story later on in the New Testament of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Because remember, Osiris didn't have a phallus or penis in order, and he was dead. However, Tahuti, Thoth, Hermes Trimagestus formed him a clay phallus, a penis, in which that Osiris uh, transformed herself into a bird, the Ba, the soul, and lit herself over top of the phallus, the Tekin, and flapped her wings hard enough until... He ejaculated, hence the resurrection or the erection, in which that brings forth life, the renewal of life. And his, in his renewal form, he was Heru, just like Jesus is God. This is where these all mythical stories come from. It's about the awakening of the soul. The soul, when it awakens from out of the pineal state, no longer half asleep, but fully awoke, aware, enlightened, awoke. When that honey and milk flows from, the, from from cannon, cannon being the brain, the mind, and the white being serotonin, melatonin, and that yellow, excuse me, and that yellow being melatonin. And when those chemicals flow from the brain, it produces that land of milk and honey in which that is talked about. Remember... These are precursors to melanin, serotonin, and melatonin. According to African biological or um, African origin of biological psychiatry by Dr. Richard King, he states, or oh, melanin, the key of the freedom, he specifically states that um, serotonin is produced between the hours of 11, oh, excuse me, of 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night, and then melatonin from 7 from 11 p.m. at night to um, 7 a.m. in the morning All Right So we get into Islam Islam um, Is the order of our set Which is another form of mayat All right We get the word a lot from Which is the pre-Arabian deity In which that the word Allah Is connected to Who is the um, male counterpart These are actually Renditions of the ancient Kemetic deity Rayet and Ra. Rayet is Ra's wife, in which the word a lot comes um, on later on come from within the Arabic transliteration of the Matunata. This is why all three monotheistic belief systems say Amen at the end of their prayers because they're actually worshiping Amen Ra. which is the hidden force, the hidden power, which once again symbolizes the soul. I can't see the soul in you, but I can see the attributes of the soul as it shines through. Melanin is the physical counterpart to the spiritual soul. All right, so now we go to Judaism. Judaism is um, is the um, is actually... Based on the followers of Tahuti, which is also pronounced Jehuti, hence the word Jew comes from Jehuti. Also Judah, Judas. All of these words come from that particular word, Jehuti. Even the word Yahuwah, because Yah was one of the names of Tahuti also. Or Yah. A A H. Y-A-H also became Jah, J-A-H, 
which also is short for Jehovah, or Yahuwah, or Yahuwah, or Yahawah. Yahuwah is Tahuti. Yahawah is the feminine counterpart to Jahudi, um, Jahudi, which is his wife, Mayat, which also within the Bible is Hawa, which is Eve, evolution. Okay, so you have to know the etymology, the linguistics, and the phonetics of these particular words. All right, so these monotheist beliefs, we know, came from um, out of Africa. A lot of it came from the 18th dynasty, from Akhenaten or Akhenaten, who is um, claimed by many to have been the monotheistic father. Where we get the Moses story from, um, him being um uh, Moses, uh, uh, Amenhotep, excuse me, the fourth. He was also from the line of the Thutmoses. Actually, he would have been Thutmose the sixth. So, hence, he would have been a Moses also in that regard. So, this is where you get this um, that Moses was the monotheistic father. Actually, he came from the story of Akhenaten. You also see Psalms 104 correlates to um, the various. Um, um, information based on um, the hymns of um, Akhenaten. So this is where all of this comes from. The rendition of the 72 um, priests from out of the Old Testament who took this information from off the walls of ancient Kemet and their travels in Samaria, which is nothing more than the same tales being told over again in Cuneic form, they took it and it's found on those um, on various clay tablets, whether it's the um, Epic of Gilgamesh or um, the Tana text or the um, the tablet of um, Ishtar or whatever the case may be. All right, these various Sumerian texts. All of this is nothing more than ancient Kemetic. To Marian information Okay um, So And we did a And we did a colony of the First Egyptians come out of They say it came out of um, Ethiopia According to Herodotus The ancient Egyptians Were a colony From Ethiopia So Cush And it's Cushites So this correlates also to um, the dominion of Egypt um, in the um, Holy Quran, Circle 7. I think it's Chapter 47 where it speaks about um, when um, we ask the Pharaoh um, to go forth into the various lands in which that becomes now what we call um, Northwest Africa and so forth and so on, which of course is nothing more than North America. Because if you take the pieces of these particular continents and put them together, you will see how all of this connects. Um, I don't know if the um, brother is on. Um, we're looking for a brother, Kair. Okay. Hopefully he'll be on in a few moments. But um, we're going to go... Um, into some more of this info, and um, this is going to be it for this session um, of the Counteract and so-called White Supremacy and Solutions. We're going to continue going into much more information. I mean, we're going to get deep um, as we continue these radio shows, but we had to start out with something in which that helps people, you know, concrete them, bring them back down to earth, so when we're taking them back up into the atmosphere, then they won't say that um, we ain't teach them about the science of um, how to balance um, heaven and earth, all right? Because that is our job. That's our job, to balance heaven and earth. One foot in heaven, one foot on earth. Not to be lost in either or, but to have mastered the balance. That's my yacht. All right. So, um, when we finish up the religions, we're going to have to get into this nonsense about who wrote the New Testament? We just finished telling you about the 72 
um, priests, as they would say, who supposedly wrote the Old Testament, all right? But really, um, the 72 is mythological. That is based on the 72 degrees in the zodiac well. All right. That is also based on um, a lot of numbers dealing with the number 72. I'll let y'all check that out. I won't get too deep into the metaphysics on that part. But because that's when you have to go into the Kabbalah and go into more explanation of the Kabbalah um, information. But just check out the number 72. Um, we know that um, the name of God, Yah, Yah, Yahivahi, is based on the number 72. Okay? So, um, that's why they said 72 wrote the Old Testament. But the individuals who actually wrote the Old Testament are not known um, in that regard. However, we do know um, who did the New Testament and the renditions from the Old Testament of whomever those writers were. As we said, um, a lot of the Psalms, a lot of the um, Ecclesiastics, the Proverbs, that was written by Amenhotep III, who is um, Ankh-Anten, uh, Akhenaten's father, as well as also Akhenaten himself. That would be your so-called David and Solomon um, within um, the Jewish transliteration of that or their plagiarization of that. Okay? Um, the New Testament, that was done by Arias Pisos and his family. All right, you can look that information up, Roman aristocratic family, Pisos, P-I-S-O. And he was related to the Ptolemy family, or the Ptolemies, in which that ran um, Egypt during its decline. And he had access to Egypt to be there, look at the walls, write down his plays or his interpretation of what he was seeing. He is also known as Josephus, the first century historian. This is why uh, when this guy from Zadagais started trying to challenge Ashwa Kwesi and Pastor Ray Hagen's, I was laughing because I didn't, I, I couldn't believe why none of them took up the challenge um, against this white boy because the only thing sources he was using was all Christian sources. But yet, hell, in the Zodegeist, you don't want to wish that show that Jesus um, was symbolic to the 12 zodiacs, um, to, um, to the sun and 12 zodiac signs, Jesus and his 12 disciples. But then you come back trying to be a Jesus fan all of a sudden and trying to prove that Jesus existed? When Jesus is the breath of life? Hence the reason why they say, this the reason why Christians say that um, Jesus was both God in the beginning? Well, because remember, God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. Hence, gave him the breath of life. Hence Jesus, or better yet, in the ancient comedic tale, that is Shu, the first begotten of Atum. Just like Jesus is the second Adam in the New Testament. Shu is the second Adam of creation. These are the things that you that we have to put together and analyze. We have to put all this information together. All right? So, um, I mean, my, my information is on YouTube, too. As a matter of fact, when I did um, the Metaphysically Decoding World Religions, I go over all of this information in which they'll be talking about now through, I think it was like a six-part um, DVD session. When I break down um, every world religion.
All right. So let's go. Um, some of the best books to get on the religious thing is the World Sixteen Crucified Saviors on Christianity before um, Christ before Christianity by John G. Jackson. Uh, Works Sixteen Crucified Saviors by Kersey Graves. Um, all the books by Gerald Massey. Genesis Revisited. Um, excuse me, not Genesis Revisited. Book of Beginnings. Genesis. Um, and um, Gerald Massey Lectures and Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World, all the books by Gerald Massey. Also, Hilton Otima, any and all the books by Hilton Otima. Also by John P. Scott. Also by Philotus. That's P-H-Y-L-O-T-U-S. Also get the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is by um, Charles Fillmore. Get the 12 Powers of Man by Charles Fillmore and his wife, Cora Fillmore. These are, um, get um, um, esoteric the esoteric free, um, um, esoteric masonry storehouse unlocked. That's by Five Lotus. Get this um, Celestine, um, excuse me, not Celestine, um, the Celestial Ship of the North by Valentia. And um, her other book, um, the Fraternal Brothers, um, the Fraternal Builders, by her also. All right, get um, Walter Williams' book, um, Historical Origin of Christianity, Historical Origin of Islam. Um, get any and all books by Dr. Um, Clark, John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben Yachinen. Matter of fact, the one by Dr. Ben Yachinen is um, um, Origin of Western Religion. Africa, um, Africa, the origin of Western religions, or uh, major world religions, or major religion, excuse me. That is a major one. You definitely have to get that by um, Dr. Ben. He breaks it down in there. Um, get um, the Bible myths by um, T. Dowen. Oh, man, we can go on with books, names, and that in this particular. Get Deceptions and Myths of the Bible. Get the Metuneta, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. By Raul Neffa. Get, um, get um, Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. Get Stolen Legacy by um, George G. James. And we say he shows how this information was plagiarized from out of Africa by the Greeks to the Romans and then eventually into um, the rest of Europe. All right? So this is... um, where this information comes from. All right. Um, let's go now to the sex and health. When we get into the science of sex, we've all been taught sex improperly because of the magazines, because of the TV or internet porn sites. We think it's just about beating it up, especially the brothers or the sister just throwing it back. And there's no spiritual connection between the two. Neither one knows the science of microcosmic orbit. Neither one knows the science of the various breath techniques, such as the cobra breath technique, in which that can help with the raising of the kundalini, bypassing the chakras, 
going directly into the brain in order to create an awakening and a use and more usage of the brain. We need to know the science of healing, alternative healing. All right, we need to know um, the symptoms of diseases and how to heal diseases. Being that the genital area is one of the um, most vulnerable areas when we start having and beginning to have sex. All right, various herbs to strengthen the genitalia area. It's soil pimento for the brothers, picium for the brothers. Um, that's to uh, strengthen the prostate gland. Damiana, which can be used by brothers as well as sisters. Also for the sister, Don Kwai. All right. Some of the good cleansing herbs will be golden seal, chaparral, garlic, black walnut, wormwood, red clover, patiaco, um, burdock, or good cleansing herbs. Blood builders would be wheatgrass, alfalfa, chickweed, which is also a good cleansing herb too. Corella spirulina. All right, the exercises that you can practice is the deer exercise, and we said you will pull up your anal muscles and perineum. Women can um, learn the signs of how to insert a small egg into the um, vagina in order to squeeze her vaginal muscles so that they will not come um, stretched out of place due to the pregnancies. So that um, her sexual gratification can be um, heightened. For the brothers, um, the books, in order to, um, brothers and sisters, for the books to get would be Sexual Reflexology by Mantak Chia, as well as also all of his books, but in particular, Sexual Re- Reflexology. Sexual Energy by Dr. Jewel Pokram. The best book is Jewel and the Lotus by my teacher, Grandmaster Sanyata Sheryl Swati. Books on alternative healing would be Reiki Essentials by Diane Stein. Pranic Healing by Choa, Coke, or Coke, K-O-K. The Art of Qigong by um, Kit Wong. W-O-N-G, Kit, K-I-T, Kit Wong, Wong Kit, excuse me, the entire is pronounced. And these are the various books that you need to get um, in your library um, as far as sex is concerned and alternative healing because that's what you want to practice. You want to be able to learn the signs of massaging, reflexology, acupressure, um, the signs of the meridians, the noids, or the nadis, as they also refer to as the various chakra, um, in order to learn how to balance them out, with the harmonial balance. You will want to also use dandelion um, herb, in which that has all 12 nutritive salts, muscle salts, tissue salts, blood salts um, in it. You can actually take the leaves off of the, um, go out right now, um, doing now being spring that they are um, growing um, and take the leaves off and you can actually take the leaves and actually um, eat them in your salad. Excellent source of nutrition. 
in order to cleanse your body out. If you uh, um, need to detoxify, you need some alkaline water. Um, Kangen or Kangen, Kangen, as it also referred to as, is um, probably the best water out on the market right now as far as alkaline or alkalinity. 9.5 in order to help balance out if your um, system is in um, 6 um, pH um, level. And how you would know that is by having some pH strips and testing in the morning your pee as well as also your saliva. And if it's not 7.0, then you are acidic. Also, another indication is if your poop don't float, you do not have enough fiber. You're not getting 20 to 30 grams of fiber on a daily basis. If your pee fizzes and has bubbles in it, then you have a predisposition towards diabetes. If you have lines running up and down your fingernails, longitude, Lines, as we call them, or longitudinal lines, that is predisposition towards arthritis. Also, you have parasites. And you need black walnut, garlic, wormwood, and cloves to clean yourself out. If you have um, white flecks or spots on your nails, then you have a zinc deficiency. And you need to increase your zinc, probably up to 100 grams a day. Excuse me, 100 milligrams a day. And the foods in which that are rich in zinc is alfalfa, kelp, spirulina, corella, green leafy vegetables, Kale, celery, lettuce, romaine in particular, even aloe. So, um, if you have black streaks in your line, um, on your on black lines, streaks um, on your fingernails and that's a disposition towards diabetes. And eventually, if they are large enough, heart disease. Also, kidney failure. So dandelion, milk thistle for the um, kidneys, as well as also uh, for the heart, hawthorn berry, Garlic, okay, so these are some of the things that you need to know. Sex isn't just about poking and stroking, it's about also genetics, that's the main thing, it's about reproduction. The second part of it is regeneration, you can regenerate yourself, reboot your battery, Recharge your battery, which is your melanin, your bodily systems, all nine of them, seven to nine, based on whoever you asked. Do proper sex. Do the proper breath techniques. One of the breath techniques is the 6363 breath technique, in which that deals with increasing auric powers or force you know what I'm saying so we looked at the um, um, now we were talking about 6363 six, breath we are talking about breathing in for a count of 6 holding it for 3 breathing out for a count of 6 holding it for 3 and doing 100 of them daily, and that will move your auric field from three feet, which is the average person's auric field, um, 
expansion from outside the physical body to actually 10 to 15 feet just by simply doing that 100 times a day, that breath technique. So by strengthening your auric field, you seal up the leaks and holes in your aura. So that means any negative thought forms in which that could have penetrated your auric field or became attached or caused them leaks and holes in which that caused disease, ailment, sickness, or et cetera, or hereby detached. So what you want to do with the 6363 breath is sit up in a chair with your back straight, with your feet shoulder width apart, and your hands in a fist balled up on top of your knees, and your mouth closed with your teeth together, mouth closed, and your tongue behind the teeth. And what that does is close off the circuits or what is called your conceptional and your governing vessel. And when you begin to start doing the visualization or what's called a microcosmic orbit or macrocosmic orbit, it depends on which one you want to do, look them up. I don't have time in order to go over all of that right now, but you will be able to um, rejuvenate yourself. This is how you regenerate your body. This is how you activate and redistribute energy into those particular organs or endocrine glands in which they become deficiency of energy. This is how you open and activate your meridians, how you activate the kundalini, how you activate um, the soul principle so you can do soul projection and soul travel or astral travel or astral projection, depending on how you want to do it. If you want to come from the solar plexus, then that's astral travel. If you want to come from the um, soul, then you would do so at the pineal gland at the top of the head. And we said you would hear like a um, a popping noise, showing that you have just broke free from out of the physical body, and you have access to all seven planes or seven heavens, and which that is mentioned within the Holy Quran. Even though the Bible only speaks about three heavens, um, it does speak about the word heavens, in which that that is. Um, based on also the seven heavens in which that is the Holy Quran speaks of, and which is also from the Jewish traditions too, because the um, Jewish or Hebrew traditions also teach about the seven heavens. So now when we get into irisology, or irisology you know, you can look at a person's eyes. Um, if there's black spots, then there's um, disposition towards kidney failure, um, especially if the... Um, um, if it's in the left, lower side, corner of the eye, if you see seeing um, floaters in the eyes, then that means that you need to detoxify. Or spots in the eyes um, means you need to detoxify. You need some eye bright and which that you can um, actually make into a tea and put some into a squeeze, um, a little um, bottle in which that you can squeeze the droplets out of and put the drops into your eyes daily. You can actually mix it with um, golden seal, eye bright, and bilberry. Those three herbs are excellent for um, eyesight, whether you're nearsighted or farsighted, or if you have um, problems with your vision or see spots or floaters or whatever they call it. All right. Now, let's get back into the science. Sex. When you have sex, the various positions in which that you have actually heal specific organs based on the position in which that you're doing, male or female. If the woman is right on top of the male, then what she is doing is opening his heart meridian. He's underneath her. And he needs to be doing some moving underneath in order to activate and open his heart meridian also. And that's to establish a connection between male and female. Okay? Um, when the man is on top of her in the missionary style, this is when the woman opens her heart meridian.
So the positions are very unique and very necessary for the healing effect. Marvin Gaye was on track when he said sexual healing. That's what sex is supposed to do is heal you, not make you tired and go to sleep or make you want to turn over and have a cigarette. You should be wanting to have more than just a genital orgasm or a general or a genital release or ejaculation, a genital ejaculation. You would want to have a full body orgasm in which that your body goes into like a little seizure because when you're releasing um, the orgasm, it is after intense Meditation, intense breathing exercises, and intense foreplay. They're kissing on the very erogenous zones. See, these are things in which that we were not taught. Our parents thought sex was something that was nasty. So they just told us about the birds and the bees. Or either they just let you learn about it in 7th and 8th grade class, in health class, and learn how to put a um, condom on a banana or a cucumber. And told you to abstain. Another book you need to get is Dao Sexology by Stephen Chang, or Stephen Chang. As well as also his um, book on um, the Dao of Health. This is what we need to be at in our mentality. We need to know about our lower self because it is through our lower self is how we get here. But our lower self is what um, we utilize in order to bring down the higher selves, the gods and the goddesses. It's a vortex in which that opens up when the male and female are together and their auras have merged to become one. Or as they say, become one flesh, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Well, also aura of my aura. This is why even after the women and male break up, that aura of each other is still embedded. Um, um, those um, portions of the aura with, of each other is still embedded for seven years. So whenever you break up with someone, there has to be intense cleansing in which that needs to be done before you get back into the next relationship. Otherwise, it's going to be just like Eric Badu said, bag lady, or better yet, bag fellow, bag dude. <laughs> you need to know how to cleanse your orbic field. You need to learn the science of pranic healing, which that you can take out what is called bioplasmic disease, which is um, auric debris. and learn how to cast it off into a tree, a plant, bush, or into the land, the earth, the ground. And they learn how to draw energy from the ground, from the um, trees, because remember, the tree gives off oxygen. The plants give off oxygen, and it takes in carbon dioxide. And that's what you give off. So it's a um, biosemiotic influence in which that you have going on with nature. It gives off what you need and you give off what it needs. So you have to learn how to bring energy from the ground, from the air, from the um, sky, in particular from um, the sun, the stellars, the constellations. This is what we need to be at right now. We need to know how to bring in more chi, prana, ki, or ra energy, as they're called within the various um, cultures. Prana within India, as it is referred to as the universal life force energy, chi within um, China, ki within Japan, Holy Spirit within the Bible or within the Christian belief system. That's why they say Holy Spirit feel like fire shut up in my bones, talking about the Kundalini being activated, which is personalized prana energy. And how do you 
uh, recharge or how to, how to replenish your kundalini personalized energy, cosmic energy, universal life force energy is by absorbing more energy. 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. You as a melanated being should be able to take in your share. That's what melanin is for. It's being able to absorb cosmic energy, all the frequencies, from electrical waves to gamma rays, cosmic rays. This is this is why you have melanin. So, you have to learn these sciences. Otherwise, you're fooling yourself, thinking that you're a spiritual or conscious being. You're not. You're doing nothing but having Facebook wars. And that's what I've seen. A lot of individuals posing themselves to be conscious when the only thing they do is know how to quote somebody else. You can quote somebody else, but as long as you got some thinking of your own up in there somewhere, I would like to see some of your thinking once in a while also. Quoting is for confirmation. It's for reaffirming. It's for validity or validating. Not for the exercise of your whole mind state. These are the things in which that is going on and the nonsense in which that has to stop. So hence we go into um, the wars. We know that one of the best books is The Art of War. But war just isn't begin on the external level. The war begins internally. The war begins internally. That is the great Jihad or the Armageddon. The battle between lower self and higher self is the war between your devil and your God. There are mentality, left and right hemispheres of your brain. Left hemisphere is analytical, rational. Right hemisphere of the brain is holistic. Left hemisphere of the brain like to break things down. Right hemisphere of the brain like to bring things together, unify. Whenever I see a lot of these Facebook wars, then I already know the individual is a left hemisphere thinker. And yet they might be talking about unity, but yet in the same regard, they're disrespecting others. So you're not holistic, so therefore you're not using the right hemisphere of your brain, and therefore you can't lead nothing but yourself into a ditch. The blind lead the blind into a ditch. Because neither one can see, truly. Real sight comes from the activation of your pineal gland. Your various eyes in which they give you access to the higher planes. And to pierce the veil of this illusion of Maya in which that you've been trapped in. It don't come from talking it. It comes from living it. Knowledge you only have to battle. The other part is wisdom, which is practical application. That's how you get wisdom, from your experiences. Knowledge and experience is what equals wisdom. Knowledge and application, practical application, is what equals wisdom, which brings forth the understanding, the ability to comprehend. These individuals have a lot of knowledge, but no wisdom. Hence, no comprehension or understanding of what is really going on. So the real war is both in yourself first. By conquering the devil within you, the four devils, as the nation and gods and earth refer to them as within the justice lessons, where it says, why must Muhammad or any Muslim murder the devil? What is the duty of every Muslim? To bring four devils, those four devils, or to murder four devils, or to kill or destroy or these four devils or conquer four devils, whatever term that you want to use, this is talking about the four lower chakras in which that the attributes is lust, greed, jealousy, and envy, which are extensions of fear. Fear is the opposite of love. 
false things or false things appearing real or false evidence, excuse me, false evidence appearing real. That's fear. That's the acronym for fear. So, these individuals or people just talking about the white man, the devil, yes, he is a um, the mentality of our lower self, made flesh. And with that is um, the lack of the justice principle, which is melanin. However, um, even that can um, be corrected with proper diet if they was able to eat more fruit, which has antioxidants and which that helps with the um, killing of free radicals in the body. If they knew the science of tones in which that is the thaw sound in which that helps with the decalcification of the pineal gland in which that gives them access to the soul principle. Not the fact that they don't have a soul. The fact is that they don't have access to it because of the calcified pineal gland. And if the Kundalini was raised up, they would spontaneous mankind combust. Now, my wife is writing something very important, too, because when the prana falls from the... Um, or what is called cosmic energy or this stardust energy force to the planet Earth, um, sometimes for those who are spiritually in tune, we are able to see these particles. They look like light bluish and sometimes gold-looking particles in which that moves around, vibrates. All right, that is what is called manna from heaven. And the reason why we're able to see it is because of the um, connection within our brain between the synapses and the dendrites, which gives us the ability in order to have a higher extra perception or higher sensory perception or what's called ESP, extra sensory powers or perception. First Corinthians 12 12th chapter speaks about the various gifts in which every being endowed with from the Holy Spirit, which is the Kundalini. It says the gift of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues. All right? These are gifts, the gift of healing. These are all gifts in which that we become endowed with once we become, um, once we let out the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Let it up and out, all right? Um, not out permanently, like uh, like they say Jesus gave up the ghost. However, but um, up and out, we're talking about within your auric field to shine forth, to be a beacon of light in a world of darkness. Okay, so these are the various sciences that we need to know. Um now, for the external portion of this war, once you have conquered the devil within you, all right, uh, which is the set or the setian principles within you, those attributes, and you have resurrected yourself to Heru, and you have resurrected our saw to become Heru, as we would say, which is the soul being resurrected from out of the pineal gland, being able to shine forth and pierce the veil, as we said, of this um, to be a beacon of light in this darkness, whatever case in which that, whatever way in which that we are explaining it, and you are perceiving it, we're talking about the activation of the soul, the awakening or the enlightenment, or enlightenment or endarkment, if some say, of the soul. And once the soul is fully awoke, then your higher self is able to guide you, and your will becomes its will. So hence, the will will be done. You know what I'm saying? In other words, that's what is meant within the scriptures, that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So um, this is what all of this is symbolic to. And I'm not trying to get biblical, but I'm trying to show you that a lot of the things and a lot of the concepts in which that has aligned our consciousness has come from the biblical stories. And we have to explain these things properly 
in order to um, have the right perception and not to be thinking that these characters in the Bible actually existed and that they was real. Now, some of them were based on actual beings or people who actually existed. Just like we said, this Moses story was based on Akhenaten. It was also based on Sargon I from out of um, Arcadia or Syria, in which that it said that he was born in a basket filled with slime and sent up the river. Same story in which that they say about Moses and his birth. So the Moses story is a compilation of various stories. That story about Sargon was actually taken from the Egyptian story of Ra and his boat, his ark. When you see on the Egyptian or Kemetic wars, um, and you're reading the high glyphics or looking at the Metuneta, um, the sacred words of God, you will see there um, the boat or the ark of Ra, in which it actually is in um, the sky, which is symbolic to being in the sky, in the in the um, constellations, and that a boat or ark like they did with Noah's story and like they did with the Moses story here or on earth. They're talking about an astral theolo- um, theological event. The ark is symbolized to the 50 Argonauts of Jason, as they refer to him as, is also called the Argo, the 50 oars of the Argo or the 50 oars of men in which that makes up part of what is called the Canis um, Major and the Canis Minor constellation area, in which that, that's where the Dark Star Sirius is located at. So this is some of the things that they are talking about. Jesus being a fisherman of men is talking about um, the Pisces, the Piscean Age, and then him telling these disciples in the last days what would be for them. He said, follow a man into a house who has a pitcher of water. He's talking about the age of Aquarius. So these various stories have to be explained because this is also a war of our psyche. So once you conquer the war within yourself, that base that war is based on your psyche, based on your mentality, and this is what we're talking about: is the so-called white supremacy and the areas in which that it affects our lives. How do you conquer that? That is the question. How do you conquer that? So that means you have to get your mind right. And once you get your mind right, as um, as George Clinton said, your ass will follow. And these are the keys that I'm giving you that we've been sharing tonight. We've been going through the solutions of each and every one of these particular areas. And these solutions are in hundreds and thousands of books, and it's never been brought together into just one book. Well, it now has, because in my book called The First World Order, this is the information that we go over. The solutions. Not to still be um, a slave to a mentality, to someone's perception and thoughts. All right, we have a few minutes left. Um, if there's any questions, um, ask me now. All right, I think somebody wanted me to get into the Pallades and the Draconians and these star beings. Um, yes, there is other life on other planets, however... Let's be more concerned about what we're doing here upon planet Earth. The reason why is because we have always given our energies to something outside of ourselves, and we have never learned how to truly love ourselves, to have self-determination, to have um, self-worth, self-love, self-acknowledgement. And this is what we have to learn how to do right now. So we'll focus rather on absorbing cosmic energies instead of worrying about cosmic beings. Because guess what they absorb too, what they have to absorb, and what they absorb in order to get to civilization, in order to travel to different galaxies, 
is the activation of the same brain in which that you have. So by absorbing more chi, ki, prana energy, Holy Spirit, you have the ability in order to awaken to your greatness once again, to be the builders of pyramids and the mounds all over the world again, and to go beyond that. Because even Jesus said the greater things he would do, and he was the greatest. Damn, he was God. So we need to wake the fuck up. <laughs> Seriously. And um, the truth of the matter is, is that we have to focus on ourselves. Beings coming from elsewhere is nice, but I'm like, you took too, you took too fucking long. I'm about to whoop your ass too. The reason why is because, think about it. Um, we went through our lynching, we went through our maiming, we went through genocide. Where was they at then? And now all of a sudden you talk talking about coming and get somebody for what? What, the probe? What, to put an probe in my ass? What? I mean, what you going to do? What can you do that I can't do for myself? That's the same mentality as Jesus. I'm waiting for white Jesus to come out of the sky um, um, as a Christian. What can you do now for me that I can't do for myself? Oh, you come to save me. From what? Myself? <laughs> yeah, the devil and me. That's what you came back to save me from, is from what I'm causing myself, from my own thoughts, from my own perceptions. I'm causing my own reality or apparent reality. No. No one is coming in that regard. They're already here. We are them also. We are the Syrian beings. Everyone has already um, spoken on those scenarios. Dr. Debbie Blair, Bobby Hammett, Phil Valentine, many others have spoken on the extraterrestrial plight and um, us being the Syrian beings. All right? Um, yes, there are um, beings on the fourth um, astral plane, or what is called the astral plane, which is the fourth dimension of the first and second overtone, and in which that has, which has the ability in order to attach themselves to the first and second root chakra to perfectly possess those who appear to be perfectly mentally healthy, but they actually aren't. They're just perfectly possessed. And they are still psychopaths and sociopaths. And they have this mentality in which that we're talking about tonight, white supremacy. And their aim is to genocide and population control and everything else in which they can think of. So we got more things to worry about here. First, with the resurrection of ourselves, the most important, let's put this in priority. Then, with the events in which that is taking place, getting the word out to our people. And then if the extra issues come into a massive form, you know, then we have to be concerned about is this Project Blue Bean in which that is taking place because Russia has put mirrors up into the sky, and now people are seeing double suns, two suns. But this can also be because Russia put mirrors up into the sky. So there's so many things going on, you know. So... Um, we, we really have to look at these things You know, we really have to look at them All right So um, we get ready to close out um, Thank you all for joining us once again We're going to be back here next Wednesday And I'll um, bring more people with you all All right Peace. First World Order Radio Finally, finally We are on the air No doubt There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. 
there's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 